the grace of God makes you reign in life. That's popular. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man death reigned, how much more? They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So, abundance of grace, receiving abundance of grace is what causes you to reign in life. As a king. Without grace, you can't reign as a king in life. That's what it, Look at the Amplified. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigns through that one, how much more, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace or merited favor and the free gift of righteousness, the free gift of righteousness is given to you at once. So that is a, a, a one-time thing. But the grace of God overflows. You can receive it over and over and over again. Okay? The free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself. Reign as kings in life. Without grace, you can't reign as a king in life. No, 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 no. Forget it. You can't reign. Uh-huh. So grace is what causes you to reign. Tell anybody, about grace is what causes you to reign. As a king. In this life. That is the only thing that makes you king. And makes you succeed. And makes you affluent. And buoyant in life. Without that, there's nothing. It's God's. It's God's influence over your soul that causes you to reign as a king. Not because of your smartness or because you pray a lot or because of your family background. No, 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 no. It's more than that. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the, it's the influence of the Lord. It's the influence of God over your soul. Wow. Grace gives you gifts. It gives you gifts of the Spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Grace gives you gifts. Romans 12, 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Eh? According to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith. It's the grace of God that gives you ability, gives you gifts. If you are going to prophesy, it's as a result of the influence of the, of the power of God over your soul to be able to prophesy. I see what I'm talking about. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Have you seen it? Let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. As of the ability which God giveth. Paul spoke about the fact that his ability to inscribe things on the heart of men was not by human effort, but by the sufficiency of God. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Hmm? Look at it. It says, "God has also made us made able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life." Go up, go to, um, go to verse four into verse five. Okay. And such trust are we through Christ to God. What? Verse five. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amplified. Not that we are fit, qualified, and sufficient in ability of ourselves to, to form personal judgment or to claim or count anything as coming from us, but our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. It's all from God. It's not from somebody else. It's all from God. So the earlier you turn to the Lord and start depending on Him, the better. You will have more results if you start putting the Lord in perspective in your life. He is the giver of grace. He is grace. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Grace. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. He is called the Spirit of Grace. Wow. God is, God, is called the God of all grace. In Romans, he calls him the God of all grace. Romans chapter 16. There are so many. But if we sing willfully after that, we have to go to the 27. But the certain faithful looking of judgment and fair indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. 28. He that despised the Lord died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 29. How, how much sort of how much sort of punishment suppose you shall be thought worthy who has trodden and have put the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and the holy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. He's called the Spirit of grace. God is the God of all grace. He's the one who gives grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see grace. I see what grace does. That is what to make your life beautiful. 
That is what to give you your ministry. And give you strength to do your ministry. Hmm? Galatians chapter 2. Look at Galatians chapter 2. You like my message? From verse 6. Galatians to 6. Maybe you will not understand it today. Maybe later on you understand it. No worries. Part of it. In 2009, in 2007, I started the meeting Reverend George preached in. I didn't understand anything. Yes. It was in 2010 I began to understand his message. There was a meeting, another, even though I couldn't understand, I still, I still persisted anyways. I got, I, I, he became my father in 2000 and, uh, early 2009. Then, I'd known him since 2007, 2008, but 2009, well, I submitted by God's grace. I was led to submit and I submitted. 2010, he was preaching in a Methodist church at, uh, is it Pruden- Prudential Hostel? Is this hostel in Uriase? Okay, but Providence, you see there's this Methodist church by it. Were you in that meeting? Yes, uh, that was the meeting I started understanding Reverend Joseph. That was when I understood, not understanding, but that was when I understood the end time. Yes, that day he preached for three hours on end time. Yes, how the sequence. That was the day my eyes opened. I was like, oh, so from here you go to here, from here you go to, from that day it's not left me today. Yes. So maybe you don't understand it today, but you understand it later. Tell everybody you understand it later. Yeah. Look at this. It says, but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatever they were, it make it no matter to me. God has said no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Next verse. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the circumcision, of circumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the gospel towards the Gentiles. Verse 9. And when James, Stephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they saw that they realized that God was working in me to cause me to do what I was doing for the Gentiles. Yeah, they saw it. When they perceived the grace that was given unto me, because they saw the working of God in me. Causing me to do what I was doing for the Gentiles. Without grace, you can't do anything for the Lord. Wow. Ah. Are you seeing the importance of grace? Ah. Without grace, you can't king. You can't king in life. You, there, there, nothing beautiful in your life. Nothing exciting in your life. Your life is monotonous. Flat. Boring. You can't go higher. You can't jump higher. You can't change levels. You need grace. Tell anybody you need grace. Without grace, you can't flow in the things of the Spirit. You can't flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah, you can't flow. You will be gift free. <laughs> yeah, the rest of gifts. Without grace, you can't give. It's the grace of God that gives you ability to give. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Grace makes you a giver. Second Corinthians eight, one to four. It's a long read, but let's read it. We do, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. It was grace. The grace of God was bestowed upon them. To be, give, to be givers. To be able to give. Next verse. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. We, we don't understand. Let's do the Amplify. Verse 2. Amplify. For in the midst of an ordeal of severe tribulation, they are the abundance of joy and their depth of poverty together have overflowed in wealth of lavish generosity on their part. Holy grace can do that. He says, in the depth of their poverty, they gave their highest. When you go and says they were even begging us to take more from them. Wow. Are you in the church? So all those who complain, eh, every time they say we should give, every time they say we should give, it's clear that the influence of God is not much on your soul. It's clear. It's grace that gives you the ability to give. Go to verse 6. 6 into 7. So much so that we have urged Titus that he, as he has begun, as he has begun, he should also complete this beneficent and gracious contribution among you, the church of Corinth. Let's read King James. King James brings it out well. It says, in so much that we desire Titus that as he has begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. His titles will bring that grace to you. The same grace that was released upon the church of Macedonia will be brought to you. 
as well in Corinth. Look at verse 7. Therefore, as you are bound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and your love to us, see that you are bound in this grace also. The grace of giving. Grace is what gives you the ability to give. And we have it as a church. We do. As a church, we have it. But as an individual, you must catch it. Don't leave it for the leaders. Though. Listen, there's prosperity in this church. I tell you, there's grace to prosper. There's grace to win souls in this church. There's grace for church growth. And there's grace to prosper individuals who are interested in the, church, the church's growth. And helping the church go forward. Helping its pastors go forward. If you tap into it, you'll be surprised at what will happen to you. Money will never be a problem for you. And I'm not talking about thousands. I'm not talking about thousands. I'm talking about millions. Of dollars. You don't have to be 50 to have one million dollars. Your first one million dollars can be at age 30 in this church. Or age 25 in this church. That is the truth. That is the truth. Just buy into it. Okay? It's a grace. It's in the church. And you can grow in it. You will have your first one million very soon. You win your first soul very soon. You win hundreds, hundreds of thousands of souls. Wow. wow. Grace. Say grace. Grace, 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 grace. Grace enriches you in all things. <laughs> grace enriches you in all things. Second Corinthians. First Corinthians, rather. First Corinthians 1, verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf. For the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ. And he explains what that grace has done. That in everything, you are enriched by him. In all things, you are enriched by him. In all utterance and in all knowledge. Next verse. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you are saying it. Yeah. It is the grace of God has brought all these things to your life. It has enriched you in all things. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That he always having all sufficiency and in all things may abound to every good work. God is able to make all grace abound to you. All grace. So grace enriches you in all things and makes you sufficient in all things. Look at the amplified of this verse. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and every blessing come to you in, in abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. Grace is what makes you self-sufficient. You don't have to go begging for money. When you realize you're begging for money, you should know that the grace in your life is smaller than it's supposed to be. You need to grow in grace. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Wow. Are you in the church? Can I preach more? Pastor was in the spirit when he said, let's do an all night. Because I've, I've, not, I've not done half of my message. See? Some people are not happy. Are you happy about what I'm coming to say to you? Yes, the second half is the real deal. Yeah, yeah that is the real deal. That's how we came. Yeah. So I don't have to stop. I have to continue. Because I've told you all about what grace does. What this grace does, grace does. But how? How to you God you grow? So therefore, and so therefore, what? Uh-huh. So therefore, grow in grace. <laughs> now, how? The question is, how do you grow in grace? So, right, how to grow in grace? How can I grow in grace? How? How? There are several ways in the Bible. The Bible shows us several ways. Okay? Number one. Is through knowledge, the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's found in Second Peter chapter one, verse one and verse two. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. 
grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? How? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So as you read your Bible, what is happening? Grace is coming to you. As you hear the word of God, what is happening to you? Grace is coming to you. If you want to increase in grace, what do you do? Just expose your ears to the word. That's all. As you are listening to the word, know that grace is coming to you. Just know it. That grace. So as I'm preaching to you now, grace is coming to you. <laughs> After the service, you say that I've increased in grace. Listen, it's called being strong in the grace of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. It says, Down therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, take advantage of the fact that you have grace. Know when you have received grace. How do you know you have received? You came all the way from your house to this place. Why would you walk out after hearing the word and say that, ah, well, they just preached something to us and we left. No, you should know. It's called spiritual understanding. Okay? I preached in Kanishi Church last two weeks or three weeks on being spiritually minded. There are Christians who don't know when spiritual things are happening. So they miss a lot of things. For instance, a Christian may not know that when you are praying in tongues there, eh, you are edifying yourself. You are making progress. So he will speak in tongues all right. But because in his mind, nothing was happening. You will not get anything. You will go away the way you came. But if you have the mindset that as I'm praying in tongues, my spirit, by the Holy Ghost within me, is praying. <laughs> as I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm making progress. It's in the Bible. If you know that you're making progress, you will make progress. If you know that you are making progress, you will make progress. If it's in your mind that what I'm doing is progress, you'll be surprised. Prayer is the place for encounters with the Lord. Jesus took his disciples up the mountain, Peter, James, and John. Bible says, and as they prayed, he was transfigured before them. Prayer is a place for transfiguration. It's a place for you to transform from one level of glory to another. But you can be praying and you don't know. You'll be speaking to him, you pick your nose a little. You look at oh, hallelujah, amen. You don't know that transfiguration is happening because of your mind. Your mind does not know. And your mind, your mind is a door, it's a say. Because your mind does not know what you are doing. You will not have anything. Cornelius was praying, as he, and as he prayed, an angel showed up. Meaning that in prayer, you can have angelic visitation. If you are expecting it, you will have it. If you are not expecting it, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. If you are not expecting, you will not get anything. You can pray till you die. Nothing will happen. Prayer is a place for trance, to fall into trances. Peter was praying. He was hungry. He went up to pray a little. As he was praying, he fell into a, a trance and saw something very powerful. But if you are praying and you don't know, you don't have that spiritual understanding that as I'm praying, this is what can be happening in my life. You will not have anything. For instance, when we are worshipping, some people just, yes, we will swear, amen, oh, hallelujah. Hey, that's what you know, you hear that. You don't know. You don't know what you can receive as you worship the Lord. That brief worship we did here, I got something out of it. I got something out of it because I had expectation as I was doing it. Amen. 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 As they worship the Lord and fast, the Holy Ghost speak. The Holy Ghost said, It's time to hear the Holy Ghost. As you are doing the worship in the church, it's time to hear the Holy Ghost. But if you don't know, you'll be there. Yes, we will so Yahweh, 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 Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, today the worship was nice for, because the songs were nice. The people's their voices were very nice. It was angelic. That's all. Wow. It's called spiritual understanding. Yes. Spiritual understanding. You have it. If you know that praises can break chains around you. You know that praises can cause demons to run away. If you know that praises can bring walls down. When you are praising God, you don't praise God like you are mad. You just be dancing. It's not, a, it's not just a shaking of the body. It's not a place to do exercise. It's not for exercising. It's a place 
to have supernatural encounters around you and to have things change in your life. But if you don't know, you will jump for 20 years. No testimony. No testimony. Hey. One of the things you need to know, for instance, as the Lord of God is coming to you, glory, your glory is changing. You are changing from one level of glory to another. If you don't know, you remain the same. The one who had results with the word was the one who had understanding. Don't have understanding, no fruits. You can hear. The fowls will come for it. The fowls will come for it. You can hear. The pressures of life will take it away. Choke it and it will die. You can hear. Nothing will happen. But when you have spiritual understanding, you know that as the word of God is coming to me, faith is coming to me. If I want faith, what do I do? I just listen to the word. When I finish listening to it, I know that faith has come to me. I don't know if you get it. One of the major things the Lord of God gives you is grace. It brings you grace. And if only you will be strong in that grace and know that as this thing is coming, grace has come to me. I have received grace. As I'm stepping out, my life is different. I can do more. I have more ability to accomplish more. You will never come into a meeting and go back the same. When you hear a meeting, you will run for it. Why do we travel to, for meetings? Why do some of us go to Nigeria for meetings? Travel to UK for meetings? I travel to UK just to be in a meeting. Yeah? Just to be in a meeting for from one day or two days. Why? Grace is there. Grace is, I'm going for more grace. I'm going for more grace. I'm not a fool. I need to be in the atmosphere of these men of God. To hear them talk as they talk and I'm there live. Something will happen for me. Bishop Willipo said, as he was in in a, 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 a Rema Bible Institute and, and Hagen was preaching. He said, as he was preaching, I desired what was upon his life to be upon my life. As he was preaching, I saw his face change like a baby and I saw oil dripping from his face and something left him and came to me and God said to me, from now on, I've given you the second order of the faith movement. That is what has made Bishop Oedipo what he is. What he heard in that meeting is what has made him what he is today. Yeah, one service. Someone was there sleeping. So I was there just enjoying the laughter, the comedy aspect. That was what he was enjoying. He didn't know that grace was coming. Grace was coming. Listen, Jesus was ordinary. That is why the Jews could not receive him. He was ordinary. He, had, he was the normal guy. He saw him as a carpenter. He was a normal guy. I didn't know that was God. If God came as a normal person, why do you think that his servant, a man of God, why do you think I will come with like as I'm coming, two angels are following me. You all run away. If you see an angel here, you run away. And God doesn't want you to run away. So you will not see it. But sometimes you open someone's eye and the person will see something. Or a picture will be taken and then there will be an evidence of something. Then it's like, hey, something is really happening. We have to take it seriously. If you don't take it seriously, on a normal day, you will not have much. Listen, I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing. You are not supposed to come and meet me. You are not supposed to. Who am I? Who am I? I am nothing. I am nobody. What is bringing you and what is making me talk to you and you hearing is the grace of God. Yeah. I have not been to Bible school. I have not done a lot of things. But when I preach, it works. When I say this should work, it will work. When I say, hey, this is going to happen for you. You realize it's happening for you? Grace. How did I get it? Listening and watching. I've been watching Pastor Chris. I'll be watching Bishop Oedipo. I'll be watching Reverend George. I'll be watching and listening. As I'm watching and listening, what is on them starts coming on me. That's the truth. The experience becomes my experience. The grace of God upon your life starts coming to my life. So as you hear, as you hear, grace and peace is multiplied on through the knowledge of God's word. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two. I'll show you number one, right? So if you, want to, if you want to get this, what do you do? Put on a message. Go to the word of God. Open your Bible. Start reading. Hmm? Read your notes. You'll be shocked. <laughs> they are normal. They are normal things. But that is where the power, that is where the power is. That is where the real power is. I wanted to be able to pray for some time. I listened to something on prayer. As I was listening, I just realized that I have strength to pray. Right now, what I like, I like prayer more than any other thing. I can pray for 10 hours. 
Yeah. Not because of the hours, but like it's fun. It's the nicest place to be for me. But some time ago, it was not at all. It was a, it was a drag like it is for you. As you are praying, and now for me, it is not. It's not a drag. It's an exciting place to be. You see? The second one. Look at the second one. I've showed the first one, right? Number two. Two declarations of a father. Or of a man of God. When a man of God says, Receive grace. Ah! <laughs> that is it. <laughs> That's it. Bishop Dark said something. He said that he couldn't pray at dawn. He couldn't wake up at dawn to pray. Okay? So he went to Yongicho. Yongicho was preaching. And as he was preaching, when he finished preaching, he came and then he touched his hand. And as he held him, he said in his mind that I'm receiving strength to pray. That was it. That was it. It has functioned for the last 20, 25 years in his life. Yeah. 20, 25 years. One day, one of, the, one of his bishops went, they went for a meeting together. The meeting dragged to around, it came home around 11 p.m. And he thought they had all gone to sleep. He woke up at 1 a.m. to go for water from the fridge. When he went, Bishop Dag was praying. He, all came, he was the one who was preaching throughout. When they came, two hours later, he was up praying. He doesn't know whether he started praying before he being, they, when they all went to sleep, then he woke up to and pray. He was just praying. Pray, bala, bala, bala. What is that? What gives you the power to like wake up and pray? Well, it's not because you are well, like you set alarm. Oh, that. How many times have you set alarm and you have slept? Oh, you will sleep. The alarm will, the, the alarm will come. Pinning, 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 pinning. You will slap the alarm. Bah, hey, hey. Yeah, that's what you will do. Someone will tell me here. Before I realize it's morning. Grace. Grace. And it comes by declarations. Of the man of God. Declaration. Because the grace of God is upon men. Did you hear what Paul said? He says, when they observed that the grace for the Gentiles was bestowed upon me. Paul had it. He had that grace. If you wanted that grace, you must see, you must see Paul. Yeah. You must see Paul. There are graces around. There's grace for church growth. It's with some people, if you don't go there, you will never have it. There's grace for prosperity. I told you. Giving. Prosperity. For you know the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That though he was rich for your sins, he became poor. So that you too is promised to my courage. That grace is with somebody. It's with men here on earth. It's not in heaven. It's with men here on earth. If you hear them and receive as they are declaring to you, you'll be shocked that the same grace will be working in your life. <laughs> one, one pastor realized that I have grace for church growth. Okay? He realized that it's like I've received something. For church growth. I also know where I received it. I know where I received it. I know I have it. I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the truth. It's a fact. He realized it when he came to me. When he came, his ministry was down and out. He had been in ministry many years more than before me. But his ministry was down and out. So many problems. He said, as God led him to come to me. He said, you are welcome. Whatever I have, I can have it. I prayed for him and said, the grace of God that is working in my life, may it work times two for you. Me, if you come to me for grace, I'll pray times two for you. Because whatever you have seen in my life, it must be greater in your life than mine. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Me, mine is sin. Yours is the one that no eye has seen yet. So you must have more than I will. I have. I prayed for him like that. Eh? I listen to me. <laughs> it's like a joke. It's as though it was a joke. And that one year, he had five churches. He planted five churches. <laughs> Within two years, all those five churches have at least 50 people in each one. I, I'm not joking with you. I'm not joking with you. He came to me and said, I realize you have grace to build. I want that grace. And if you've noticed it, this, they perceive that the grace of God was upon me. The, it's a perception. If you perceive it, you have it. If you perceive it, if only you will perceive it. If only you will not think that, oh, this guy is a normal guy, he's just moving around it. We are normal guys, but there's something called grace that is working in our life. Oh, that's the truth. I want to declare it works. I, I realize you have grace for building. I want to be able to build. I said, okay, let's do build. We seek grace to build. 
Receive grace to build. Hey, last week, praise what? Praise Friday. Uh, so on Tuesday, Tuesday after the prayer, I went to his site to go and visit. But my men and brethren, he has built, he has done slabs, two slabs. They didn't have anything, or they didn't have money. No, don't you understand? When we were going to do the verse slab, it came to him, like, man, we don't have, I said, no. Then he said, they are quoting big figures. I said, they are just figures. They are just numbers. It's nothing. And he took it for, I said, it's, it's not, it's just figures. We have grace, we build it. I said, yes, we have grace, you build it. Within one year, you should see what they have put up. You know the one I'm talking about? Within one year, ah, pa, 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 it's gone. When I got there, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you serious? Ah, this thing works like that. It's the truth. If you like, try and build something ah, without the grace to build. Yeah, yeah. But you know what you But you have a shock. Yeah, it's fabulous. Grace, it's in men. And when they declare, it works. So Paul always declared, every introduction of his, his letter, he will say grace be unto you. Why was he saying grace be unto them? Because he knew he had grace to give to them. So he would declare, grace be unto you. Let me show you some scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians 1, from 1 to 3. I have always, I've preached, I've showed you one, showing you two now. I'll show you three and four. I'll show you everything before I would, before we close, okay? Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustains our brother. Unto the church of God, which is our calling, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, all to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Verse 3. Grace be unto you. In almost every place, it's grace be unto you. He will, he will declare grace upon your life. <laughs> what, what is grace? Grace is the supernatural influence, the supernatural ability of God that works, isn't it? That produces certain things. You will not see grace, but you will see the effects of grace. You will clearly see that ah, there's something. There's something working. There's something working. Yeah, there's something working. For instance, the man of God will say, anybody who comes to this place and believes that this can happen for him, it will happen for him. People will go there and go and pray and say that you believe what the man of God has said, they will come home and it is working in your life. <laughs> you joke with the jokes with you. Yeah, you joke with the jokes with you. No, what, what happens in this place? It's not normal. It is not normal. There's grace of financial buoyancy. I tell you, I tell you, financial buoyancy on a personal level and in your ministry. On a personal level in your ministry. If you depend on human beings, you will not depend on the grace of God. Grace be unto you. In, in Romans chapter 16, Paul spoke about coming to them in the blessings, of the, in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. What is the, the fullness of the blessings? It's the grace of God. He was talking about the grace of God, actually. Romans chapter 16. Um, guess what? Which one do you want? Verse 15. I found it. Yeah. He says, and I'm sure that when I come unto you, 29, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Let's read the Amplified. He was going to visit them. He said, in that meeting, as I'm coming to that meeting, I'll be coming with something. And I know that when I do come to you, I shall come in the abundant blessing of the gospel of Christ. What does the gospel of Christ do? It gives you grace. Am I lying? What it gives you? Jesus came. Jesus is the grace of God to man. John chapter 1. Eh? Guess what? Verse 16. 16, right? John 1, 16. For and of his fullness have you received and grace, for grace. It says Jesus brought grace. Jesus is the gospel. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He's the bringer of grace. Hey. So when we are coming in his name, what are we coming in? We are coming in his name with grace. With grace. Grace. Your life will never be the same. So when the man of God is declaring, like saying some things, 
Because they are scared. You don't know. You don't know. You, don't know. you are joking. I was telling our full time ministers some time ago that there is no financial transaction between me and my father in law in the Lord. Reverend George has never given me money before. Since I've known him for the last 13 years. He has never given me money that, oh, take this. Pastor, to take this for transport. No. Never. And that is not why we are, we are together. We are not together. It's no financial transaction between him, from him to me. No. It's grace transaction. I go, I kneel down, he prays for me in my, into, my empty, into my empty head with his full of grace hand. Lays his full of grace hand upon my head. And then speaks into my life. Go forward. Advance. Prosper. Be in hell. Have more come to you. And I stand up and say, yes sir, thank you very much. When I go, it happens. Then I am the one who comes to sow into his life, not he giving me something. I'm the one who will sow into his life. Yeah. For more. To have access. Yeah. Are you in the church or you have gone home? Grace. It comes through the knowledge of God and also through declarations of the, of the prophets of God, the men of God. When they say this will happen. Receive grace. Receive grace. I'm saying it now. Receive grace. <laughs> Receive grace for every aspect of your life. To be able to jump the head those that are in your life. Do you believe it? it happens to you practically? It happens for you practically. 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 Look at 1 Corinthians 16, 23. So many scriptures. So many. I'm just jumping some of them. It's fine. It is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you. Ah, who is the one talking? Paul. He's writing. He's ending his letter. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you. And they enjoyed it. They had it. The grace of our Lord Jesus if it was, If this was just a closing remark. Ah, this is it's not just a closing remark. I don't know if you get it. It's not just, oh, the grace of our Lord like a way to end the letter. Mm, it's not a way to end the letter. It's not formality. He was communicating the grace of God to them by declaring it for them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. More grace. More grace. More grace. More grace. Yeah. So if you believe it, it happens practically. And as you are listening to me saying, they start, they, start, they start declaring some things. Rise up. Start receiving it. Don't say, oh, when the, when, normally when they are ending their preaching, they start, they go hyper. I've closed meetings where I don't go hyper. I'll just finish. Have you been blessed? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. It's finished. Then I'll go. Yeah. But there are other meetings as we are closing. See that something starts happening. The Lord will put some words into your mouth. And then you start speaking. If you receive it, you receive grace to do more. Yeah. Grace. Grace. It makes your life beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's, it's with men it's with men. It's not in heaven. Church growth is with men. It's right here in Ghana. And we, and we disrespect them. Bishop Dag has it. Archbishop Nick has it. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Declaration. Receive it. Yeah, when they say receive it, hey, what are we receiving? Yeah. Grace is coming. Grace is flying to you. Yeah. This is flying to you. It's with men. And they communicate it through speech. Through speech. Through speech. There's grace to work hard. Paul said it. It's, this grace was given to me. Yeah. You should put the poor works for 16 hours a day. It's not normal. You try, you die. It's grace. If you receive the grace, you can have it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so declarations of men of God. You see? What gr- the grace that is of... And you hear it in your messages. Yes, you hear it. You hear it as they are talking. So say it. Take it for yourself. Hallelujah. The next one. I don't know if you are following me. So I'm showing you how to grow in grace. That's how you can grow in grace. Re- just receive. Okay? Number three. Finding and receiving grace. 
you, you can grow in grace by finding and receiving grace. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Finding and receiving grace. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Remember this. That we may obtain mercy. Then it says, and find grace to help in time of need. So how does this one work? This one works when, ask, uh, when you, you know you have a need. You get it? Let's say you want to... What do you want to do? You want to double your church. You want your church, the size of your church to become more. As a preacher, as a pastor. You know that you have that need. You have a need of doubling your church. Now that you have found that need, the first thing is not to put plans together. The first thing is to receive grace. Okay? So that one, you can do it on your own. You don't need a third party to say it. Now that you have found that you have a certain need, you have a certain, you need help in a time of need. Receive grace for that particular thing. I don't know if you catch it. So, Romans chapter 5, verse 17 is the other scripture that is part of the point. Eh? He mentions this. How much more they which receive abundance of grace. Have you seen it? How much more they which receive abundance of grace. So, if you can know that you need grace for this, you need help, you need help with this, then you can find grace for it. How? By receiving grace for it. Please do you understand. Yeah. So, that one on your own, in your prayer, I receive grace. You know, you are supposed to, okay, maybe you want to, you want to make your business earn more. You've noticed that your business needs to earn more. What do you do? The first thing to do is not to start planning. Okay, if we can sell more here, make more sales. No, you have gone the wrong way. Receive grace for it. Now that you have found the need, the need find grace, receive grace for it. I don't know if you get it. So you say to yourself, but I receive grace. I receive well-timed help. For me, with respect to doubling my business, making sure things go forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. As simple as that. As I said, to grow in grace. You can grow in grace. There's no roof. You can grow in, you can go as far as you want to. Yeah. There's no roof. There's no limit. You can go as much as. It's how much more they receive. They would receive abundance. It's abundance of grace. If you receive it, you can have it. In the church, the fourth way is through humility. Do what? Humility. Say humility. James chapter 4 verse 5. I'm closing. Tell your neighbor he's closing. Oh, tell your neighbor he's closing. Finally. Maybe you don't see me for another three years. You never know. Hallelujah. Say through humility. You can, rec- you can grow in grace. By being humble. If you want to go higher, go down. Become more humble. Ask your neighbor, are you humble? What did your neighbor say? Ask for a reply. Are you humble? Pride. Pride will kill you. Pride will take every grace you have away from you. Pride. Ah, yeah. Pride. James chapter 4, verse 5 and verse 6. Do you think that the scripture seeth in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lasteth to envy? Says, do you think that the scripture says it's in vain? It's not in vain. The, spirit, the Holy Spirit that is in you lasts to envy. Hey. Then it says, but he giveth more grace. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Spirit of grace? He giveth more grace. So the Holy Spirit is in charge of giving more grace. If you are growing grace, he says, wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God resists, he, sh- he shoulders the proud, but gives grace to the one who is humble. Now what does it mean to be humble? When we say humility, what are we talking about? Does it mean not talking, not saying much? No. Does it mean being more and more? No. That's not what it means. Humility is being 
open enough to allow God to correct you, to allow the word of God to have an effect on you. You hear what I said? Being open enough to allow your life to go the way God says it should go. That is humility. Humility is putting yourself aside and taking what God has said. In other words, doing the word of God is humility. Obeying what God has said is humility. The Bible says we should treat, we should receive one another. Okay? We should think that the other person is better than we are. So if you refuse to listen to what God, God of God says and you feel that you are better than somebody, you are proud. Are you seeing it? The Bible says we should not judge lest we be judged. If you judge, what are you doing? You are proud. So humility is being open enough to, uh, to do what God says to do. That is why every time he talks about humility, he, he always talks about it with respect to God. It's with respect to God. But he giveth grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the power, but giveth grace unto the humble. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. From verse 5. 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Is it the word of God that said it? The word of God says, if you are younger, submit yourself to the elder. If you disobey it, what will happen? You are proud. You are not humble. Ye of all, yea, all of you be subject one to another. If you don't do it, you are proud. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud. He showed us the proud and giveth grace to the humble. He showed us the proud and gives grace to the humble. Who is the proud one? The one who does things opposite what God has said. You know what God has said, but you choose to do the other one. Pride. You know that God says, don't fornicate. That is what you will do. Pride. We are not humble enough. So grace does not come. You don't grow in grace. Blatantly disobeying what God has You know. You know what he has said. He says, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who despitefully use you and persecute you. If you curse those who curse you, you are proud. Hey, are you understanding humility now? And so humility is not being oh, like you yeah, can be now and can be <laughs> being afraid. That's not humility. That is not it at all. Humility is open, being open enough to do what God says to do. To allow the word of God to have an effect on you. That is humility. That you feel that what God says is more important than how you feel. Yes. You feel God, what God says is more important than how you feel. Yes, I know that God said this, but that is a proud person right there. I see it. Look at Philippians. Okay, you let's continue. Go to the next verse. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, where? Where? What does that mean? It's what I've explained to you. It's under, your humility is under the mighty hand of God. The authority of God. Letting his word, his authority, be higher than what you think and your opinion. So that he may exalt you in due time. There's a due time. He will exalt you. Are you in the church? Look at the next verse. Verse 7. I'm closing. Then it says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. It is humility to cast all your care upon him. Go back. Go back to verse 6. It doesn't end there. Look at it. it says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. Exalt that he may exalt you in due time. Is there a full stop? The next verse shows you what he just said. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. It is humility to cast your care upon him and not take your care and be thinking of, of, of take your care upon yourself. Yeah, I, I know what to do. I know what to do. Yeah. Being humility is being restful enough to allow God to think about your cares rather than you. Like, you need, I need to do something about that. No, relax for Him to work in your life. That is humility. You see it? Yeah. Just doing what God says you should do is humility. 
Grace comes by the word. So as you humble yourself under the word, grace comes to you. He gives more grace. More grace. More grace. You see that you are going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Let the word of God become your guide. Not what you think. Not your opinion about yourself and about life. As for life, you need to marry a beautiful lady. If you don't marry a beautiful lady, you are in trouble. What did God say about beauty? His beauty is vain. But you say that beauty is it. That is it. You need to marry a lady who is beautiful. So don't let, you, don't let, you don't listen to anybody. Clearly, you are proud. Hey! I knew this one would get you. I knew. As I was praying, God told me to get you. So good is getting you. But that's what the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a new term, man. You are shouting. I asked them. Wow. Humility. Say humility. 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 Loving your neighbor. Loving your neighbor. He says, love your neighbor. If your neighbor is being foolish, what do you do? Love him. The ability to do what God says you should do in the midst of the circumstance is humility. Like, I, if it were me, I'll slap him. But this is what God says, so I'll refrain my hand from slapping him. That's humility. You are, you are cool enough, open enough for God, what God says to be active in your life. He says you receive more grace. God, he giveth more grace. Like he will give you more grace, more grace, more grace. You are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Not thinking that some accomplishments around you makes you become better than the other person. You are not. Under no circumstance, you cannot be better than the other person. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter, chapter 2, right? From verse 1. From verse 1. Let's do from verse 1. I'm closing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bounds of mercy, bounds and mercy, for for you, my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being one of, of one accord, of one mind. Next verse. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. How is it? Not through strife. Don't do anything through, through strife or vain glory. Because you want to become something. So, hmm. well, let's drop those things. Listen, one of, the, one of the things that is bringing me grace is humility. Yeah. I, I know it. I know it. There are things people say that I don't allow. So I've, I've had people come to my office who come and say, hey, man of God, you are blessed. The things you are doing, this person didn't do it when he was your, your age. And this is, this is, this is. Like, ah, it's enough. That's what you think. I don't think I've done anything. I, I honestly don't think I've, sometimes it's even to a fault. If you're not careful, you'll not give glory to God for what he has done. I don't think I've done anything. That is the honest truth. Honest truth. Yes, it's the grace of God that is working. It is to his glory. It is not, to, it's not be, for me to become something. What are you? Ask me about what are you? Everyone say, what are you? What are you? You are nothing. You are nobody. Nothing. Well, there's nothing to be like. Yeah. Your beauty is from God. Your blessing is from God. It's because of him. It's not because of you. Your money is from God. Everything is from God. Whatever it is that you have. He says, if you, you, what you have, you receive from God. Why then do you boast? As though you did not receive it from God. You see, when Vashti was called to come to the banquet, she said, who is he? Why is he calling me? Doesn't he know that I don't like this? this, this, this. Right. He removed her immediately. Nebuchadnezzar was walking around. God had made him what he had become. But he started attributing everything that he had become to himself. He said, I, by my might and my power, have gotten me all these things. And God said, you are a big fool. You are going to become an animal for seven years to learn sense. He became an animal. Instead of receiving grace, he became an animal. He didn't recognize that what he had was from God. 
Whatever you have is from God. It's from God. What do you think about what I'm saying? So you can't attribute anything to yourself. Like, that is humility. Humility is acknowledging God in your life and acknowledging that everything that you have is from him. And hence, whatever he says, you will follow. You did, Bob. <laughs> humility. Yeah. When Herod made an oration, the Bible says he sounded like an angel. And the people admired him and said, ah, he sounded like an angel. And Herod took it to his heart. That was the end of his life. God smote him and he died. He rotted at, at once. Worms came out of him because he didn't give glory to God. Hey. So, <laughs> humility is acknowledging that everything I have is for the Lord. It's for the Lord. Never let men's praises get to your heart. Because men will praise you. When they see the grace of God working, they will start praising Hey, Ale, this is here. Hey, hey, you are doing well, Lord. You are not. It's God. It's God. Hallelujah. <laughs> let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let it esteem other. Better than themselves. I feel you are better than me. Oh, that's the truth. Are you my Koyuko? Chia, are you my Koyuko? Listen, you are nobody. You are nobody. After all is said and done, you are clay. Six feet. You know in 40 years. How many of you know in 40 years? Yeah. When you die, all the milk you are drinking, the eggs you are eating, the shawarma you are, shawarma you are eating, the pizza, the things that, you, it's like, I'm wealthy, I'm eating this, I'm eating that, I'm eating that. You are partnering yourself for in 40 years to enjoy at the end of the day. <laughs> when you die, they will enter your casket. They will say, nye, 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 nye. there we have gotten you. <laughs> ah, nye, 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 nye. They will chew your head, chew your hand, chew everything, they will, they will eat everything. You are fattening yourself on 40 years. And you are making two no. Yeah, do you eat? Do you eat? Have you ever eaten at Labadi Beach before? I've eaten at Labadi. What is Labadi Beach? What is Lambadi Beach? Have you ever eaten at Kimpiski before? I ate at Kimpiski last night and it was very nice. The food, why won't you put the food out? <laughs> hey. That's the making right? The things men use for glory for themselves. It's sad. Wow. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Others. Consider the other person better than him. That's humility. Being humble enough, being open enough for what God has said to be real in your life and giving glory to God. Humility. Says the more you humble yourself, the more he exalts you. Grace exalts you. He giveth more grace. For what purpose? For your exaltation. For your exaltation. You see that you're going higher and higher, doing better, better, better. Your life is getting more nicer and nicer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? The last thing I want to say to you is that don't receive the grace of God in vain. Two things. Don't frustrate the grace of God and don't receive the grace of God in vain. So let me show you these two scriptures and I'll close, okay? So don't frustrate the grace of God. Galatians 2, verse 21. Galatians 2, 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ is dead in vain. Have you seen it? So, how do you not frustrate the grace of God? Do not frustrate the grace of God by accepting what God has said concerning you. Just accept what. If you accept what God has said concerning you and live in that, you are not frustrating the grace of God. If you say that, ah, God has said this, but hey, we know our problems, we know our troubles, whatever. You are frustrating the grace of God. He says, receive the grace, let the grace act in your life. I don't know if you are catching it. Go to chapter 5, Galatians 5, verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whoever, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. He says, if you are justified by the law, if you, are, if you feel qualified before God through, your, through the law, you are falling from grace. You are frustrating the grace of God. So, don't frustrate the grace of God by accepting what God says he has done and by accepting what God says he's doing in your life. That's how not to frustrate the grace of God. Then don't receive the grace of God in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. Because some receive the grace of God in vain. They receive the grace of God, but they never use it. I don't know if you get it. 
they never acknowledge it and hence never use it. So you know that you receive grace in this meeting. When you step out, you don't use it. You've received the grace of God, but in vain. So Paul says, but by the grace of God, I'm what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly. I used it. I did what I knew the grace of God was in my life for. He gave me grace to be hardworking. Therefore, when I went out, I decided that I have grace to be hardworking. So I used that grace to do the hard work I'm supposed to do. Are you seeing it? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Also talks about the same thing. Next, next month is a month of grace. I've given you enough. I've given you enough material on it. Yeah. I've given you enough material on it. This is what I've preached to you for one month. It's a Sunday, Sunday, one month, four weeks. I've preached it to you now. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I helped thee. Behold, now is an accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Did I say verse 2? Oh, 1 and 2. 1 and 2. We'll go back to 1. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Because he has said, now is the accepted time. God has said, now is the accepted time. If God has said, now is the accepted time. If God has said, this is the day of salvation. What? What are you waiting for? Receive the salvation. Let it become practical in your life. That's what he's saying. So don't make the grace of God vain. If this is what God has said, agree that this is what God has said concerning me. Agree that I have the grace to do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So whatever I'm doing, I am strengthened to do it. That's the way not to take the grace of God in vain. Remember, listen, brothers and sisters, we are in the dispensation of grace. And we are the trophies of God's grace. God is interested in making your life sweet and making your life excellent and making your life a standard for many others to emulate. So, take advantage of the grace of God in your life. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Last scripture. If I quote another scripture, come and counsel me after church. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. How many scriptures have you written since I started talking? Wow. Have you been blessed? There's grace to remember scriptures. Hey, there's grace to remember scriptures. Yeah. It's grace. It's grace. That's the truth. If you desire it, to come. Bring your life practically. According as you have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Next verse, please. Having predestinated, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace. We have been chosen to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in every love. Have you seen it? Are you in the church? Yeah. So we are for the praise of the glory of his grace. You are a trophy showcasing how good he is and his work in humanity. So don't frustrate the grace of God. When you receive grace, eh? use it. Always remember that I have grace for this thing. I have grace to pray. When I stand to pray, I can pray. I have grace to read my Bible. When I stand to read my Bible, I'm able to read it. I have grace to say no certain things. Therefore, when I, when I meet those things, I can say no. What will you do if someone sends you a very, uh, uh, it gives you sponsorship? Yeah. What will you do? Will you say, oh, God, you know that I am not strong. You have brought this. You are not strong. Or you are, you know that. that. But I see you. You are frustrating the grace of God. That's what you're doing. You are making the grace of God of non-effect in your life. Hallelujah. So accept what God is doing in you. Accept. I have grace. I have grace for this thing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going forward. I have grace to prosper. I have grace to prosper. I have grace to increase. I have grace to, to live in glory all the days of my life. Rise up upon your feet and thank God for what I shared with you. Thank God.